Uh, it is your Wednesday edition of Hot News, everybody. Hope you're enjoying the middle of the week. I just want to say right now, if you're watching this right now, finish this episode of Hot News and then come join us over on Twitch because we're going to be doing a team stream over on Twitch. Reese and Catelyn are going to be joining us from South Africa. It's going to be amazing. So twitch.tv forward slash UF Disciple. Check us out there. We got a lot of hot news to get through, including the fact that tariffs expired, some computer parts are just going to go freaking crazy expensive. Ton of Intel benchmarks, as well as a bunch of other NVIDIA news, Elder Scrolls 6 stuff. We'll get into all of that after we talk about today's episode sponsor, which is ButcherBox. I've been talking about ButcherBox a lot lately, and that's because it has revolutionized how my family actually gets our meat. We get it from ButcherBox delivered straight to our door, frozen the entire way in a box that's conveniently packaged and just makes everything so much simpler. And the meat's actually really good and it's 100% grass fed and grass finished beef, heritage breed pork, free range organic chicken, as well as wild caught seafood and the whole nine yards. We absolutely love it. We choose what box we need based on our meat eating preferences. And in case you want it, you can use the link in the video description and you can get the free ultimate keto bundle right now, which essentially just amounts to 10 pounds of free meat, a pork butt, bone and chicken thighs and ground beef free in your first box, 10 pounds of meat for free just from signing up. Holy crap, is that a good deal? And ButcherBox by itself is just a good deal. So check it out at the link in the video description in case you're interested. And now let's get into the tech news. Because my friends, it is bad. Not only are shortages happening just across the world very frequently, but it also looks like there's now a tariff expiration that's going to start jacking up prices even further. So this is coming as tariffs that were implemented in 2018 expired. You can see here the specific one that was done. The only company that has yet to address it as of filming hot news is Asus, which is announcing that the MSRP for their components is going to be going up in 2021. Asus kind of leading the way, but I would expect that many of the other computer manufacturers are going to start following suit. After that, we can see the increased prices right here. Their cheapest 3090 is now going to be $1,800. Their cheapest 3080 is going to be $859. Their cheapest 3070 is going to be $650. Their cheapest 3070 is gonna be $600 and their cheapest 3060 Ti is gonna be $500. That is a massive price increase across all different SKUs. This is because the percentage rate of tariffs is ranging between seven and a half to 25%. There was an exclusion that was in there for certain computer components, which included GPUs as well as other things. And that seems to have expired at this point. So this is just kind of the first wave of Asus is announcing, hey, look, you're probably gonna pay 25% more for a 3060 Ti and it's likely going to cascade down the line for all of the PC building. So if you were wanting to buy a PC, I, whoever told you to wait for the 30 series just was wrong. Complete, I, if I said that at any point that you should have waited, my bad. I just, who knew it was gonna be this bad? In this Tom's Hardware article specifically, I do wanna point out the fact that they do bring up that this could be a scapegoat for the fact that some of these companies do indeed need to charge higher prices because of things related to COVID, such as higher shipping charges and just making it a lot more difficult to make a profit on all of this. But at the same time, the tariff exclusion did expire so it's not like it's a completely, oh, they, they're they just completely lying to us. It just seems like all of this is bubbling up to, hey, no, we need to actually charge higher prices than whatever the MSRP quoted to you from NVIDIA was. They can flip off because we need to still keep our bottom line going. So this is likely going to make the beginning of 2021 a really rough time for PC buying. Not only are we constantly having shortages with the live streams that we've been doing over on Twitch, where I have people part out PC PCs for me to pick from that just by the time I get to reviewing their build, they're out of stock and it's just very difficult to work with right now. So I'm unfortunately here to bring you the bad news that prices are going to go up rip. But it also looks like benchmarks are gonna go up with Intel because we got leaked benchmarks of the 11900K and 11700K and they are looking pretty good. Looks like Intel might take back the gaming crown from AMD with these. So the 11900K benchmark shows that the chip can pull at 3% ahead of the 5950X in signal core performance, which is essentially what you need to get the gaming crown these days. It falls behind in multi-threaded because the 11900K is only gonna be eight cores and the 5950X is obviously 16. So that makes sense. The 11700K, 
There's also a CPU Z benchmark for the 11900K, which kind of indicates it's in the same performance bracket of slightly beating the 5950X and just being a pretty dang good increase from Intel finally. Then we also have the 11700K benchmarks. The eight core chip is beating the 10 core 10900K from the last generation and looks like it's gonna be on par with the 5800X, if not a little bit faster. So all of this is kind of essentially amounting to the fact that Intel does look like it's gonna remain competitive with AMD. They finally are getting things sorted. They're still on 14 nanometers, but they're bringing out architectural improvements that can finally get them back in the page of people buying them. Are you gonna consider purchasing Intel if they are better than AMD at a lower price point? Or are you just like so mad at Intel for what they've done to you the last few years that you can never forgive them? Consider the fact that both of these processors are on their last stages of motherboards. The 11900K is gonna be able to go on Z490 and Z590. The 5950X can go on the X570, but there's not gonna be any more upgrade paths from that. So you have to reset overall. I don't know, what do you think? But it's clear that Intel's not gonna catch up to AMD when it comes to GPUs anytime soon, but we got some indication of their DG2 upcoming GPU with 512 execution units and eight gigabytes GDR6, which is a pleasant surprise. It looks like that this is likely going to be going into some form of a mobile processor. It's not likely gonna be something that's gonna shake the ground with how great of performance it is. Intel entering into the GPU scene seems to be more of a whimper than a bang, and it, that's not Intel, then my name's not Bob. And we could just talk about a little bit more future with Intel because there's an Alder Lake benchmark that has appeared on Geekbench, which the intriguing part about this is number one, it's the next next generation. So we're waiting on Rocket Lake right now, Alder Lake's coming after, but this one, if you look closely, it is a 16 core 24 thread processor, which means certain cores are hyper threaded and certain ones are not. It's just gonna be an interesting big little design that Intel's gonna be convoluting everything with and just good luck keeping up with all of it. But here at Hot News, we'll keep you up to date so that you can stay up to date on all of it. There's also some indication that Alder Lake's gonna feature PCI Express 5.0, as well as likely DDR5. So just all the fives slapping together. Speaking of fives, AMD's Threadripper 5000 series might be revealed next week, according to some information that's out there. Genesis Peak processor should start at a 16 core model. So essentially AMD is going back to first and second gen Threadrippers where it started at 16 cores. They got rid of that with a 3950X kind of taking that 16 core spot, but I think there might be some indication that people would want a 16 core with higher PCI Express lanes to make it a little bit better for them. Would you be more interested in a 16 core Threadripper? Ripper over a 16 core regular Ryzen part? Let me know down in the comments. And then there's also some indication that there's gonna be an NVIDIA RTX 3050, 3050 Ti, and 3060 debuted at CES next week, according to Lenovo, but Lenovo has always said stuff in the past that never really panned out. Let need I remind you yet again that they also said that the 1180 and 1160 were gonna happen and those never popped up. But what has popped up is a box art of a card we haven't heard of. And according to a rumor, this is somehow going to be between the 3060 Ti and the 3070, but there's also going to be a 3060 and none of this makes any sense there's going to be a 3060 ultra with 12 gigs you can see right there okay great i i, I can't parse it nvidia to fix my brain just tell me tell me how much i pay for this all right and tell me when i can get it i'm not i'm just I'm not going to keep going with this but let's reset let me bring back i got some hype in me for this next article because persona soundtracks are now on Spotify, heck yes. I love, 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 I hit the fan above my head. I love the Persona 5 soundtrack. It's amazing, I I just, it's on, I've been listening to it all day. I was listening to it while preparing this hot news. I just, mwah, chef's kiss perfection is, that's just, yes, heck yeah. I'm excited. I'm not as excited about the Galaxy S21, but Samsung has confirmed that they're gonna be revealing it on January 14th at their CES event at 7 a.m. Pacific, 10 a.m. Eastern, in case you wanna tune in for that. OnePlus is gonna be debuting the Nord phone in the US the day after on January 15th, releasing two different models, the Nord N10 5G and N100 at $299 and $179 respectively. That $300 phone's actually looking quite good. Snapdragon 696 gigs of RAM, 128 gigs of storage, and a 90 hertz refresh rate, as well as 5G. It's not supposed to like be flagship, but that's some good specking for 300 bucks. I would take that. And Apple's gonna take 
everything, just the, the whole kit and caboodle, and they're gonna slap it on your MacBook. That's the whole plan with this new patent that got granted. Apparently, Apple wants you to charge your iPhone, iPad, and watch on your MacBook for some reason, as well as wirelessly charging your MacBook. The whole uh, the patent just kind of indicates they want they want coils everywhere. It's, it's Coil Nation is now Apple's new name. The whole Apple thing, it's made of coils. You're welcome. Now I'm gonna spring on over to the Elder Scrolls 6 tease that came out from Bethesda. They teased this map, which has people thinking that Elder Scrolls 6 is somehow gonna be set in Hammerfell. I'm not an Elder Scrolls guy. I'm just saying this for anybody who may be interested in these topics. I just, I never played it. I never got into it. And I just can't bring myself to play a game from that long ago right now. Oh. Which it doesn't feel like that long ago that Minecraft Earth got launched, but apparently it's shutting down this coming June. June 30th is going to be its last day. This game always seemed like it was just trying to cash in on the Pokemon Go thing, and I, I kind of felt like it always was. Anyways, Mojang Studios is going to make an update, one last update, to say goodbye to the game. But it's everything that would have made the game more popular to begin with, such as it's going to get away with microtransactions and reduce the time that it takes to craft and build things in the AR game. So it's gonna make it easier to play and completely free, which if you wanted people to play your game, maybe you should have done that in the first place. But on the other hand, maybe that's what they are doing so that people do play it and so that they don't have to shut down on June 30th. Or maybe it's just they, they're going to do it no matter what. I don't know. I'm no matter what going to end this episode of Hot News because I need to go listen to more Persona 5 soundtrack. I'm just going to burnt dinner, burnt dinner, burnt dinner. The, the, the bass slaps so hard in the Persona 5 soundtrack. It's just just ah, oh, I love it. Yes. And you should love butcher box like i do so check them out at the link in the video description get 10 pounds of free meat 10 pounds don't let the word keto scare you it's 10 pounds of meat just friggin what that's awesome get free get the free meat in the link in the video description and i'm gonna nope not using that segue that came to my mind i'm gonna leave bye <laughs>